The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated stations present The Pacific Story. In the mounting fury of world conflict, events in the Pacific are taking on ever greater importance. Here is the story of the Pacific and the millions of people who live around this greatest sea. The drama of the peoples whose destiny is at stake in the Pacific War. Here, as another public service, is the tale of the war in the Pacific and its meaning to us and to the generations to come. The Kondung Army. Army, and not the Navy, is the eldest son of New Japan. Koiso said that. Kuniaki Koiso, the premier of Japan, and he knows whereof he speaks. Japan's power is in its land forces, not its sea forces. What Kuniaki Koiso means by this is that Japan's army, particularly the Kandung army, not only guides the basic policies of the Japanese Navy, but also guides and controls the destinies of Japan itself. The Gondung Army is the elite Japanese army. It is an army 700,000 strong. It is the army responsible for the invasion and seizure of Manchuria. The attacks on Russia over the Manchurian-Siberian border. The starting of the present war with China at the Marco Polo Bridge. The sinking of the American gunboat Panay and the promotion of the present war against the United States. Through these deeds, its leaders have become world known. Itigaki, the crafty policymaker. Nishio, the mysterious strongman. Noihara, the Lawrence of Asia. Hashimoto, the fire-eating zealot. Tojo, the bogeyman and the razor. Koiso, disciple of Japanese world dominion. These arch-militarists, along with Araki, Minami, Sugiyama, Umizo, and others, have browbeaten and bent Japanese big business to their will have taken charge of executing Japan's plan for world dominion and have assumed such power that to question them is almost the same as to question the emperor. Japanese civilians, one September morning in 1931, woke up and learned that Japan was at war with China. We did not even know that war was imminent. There have been riots in Manchuria since July. But it was said these were only incidents. Last month, Captain Nakamura was killed in Manchuria. You call that? An incident? Oh, they said he was a spy. And yesterday, the Chinese blew up a section of track on the South Manchurian Railway. It is time that we put a stop to these incidents. The Manchurian incidents were cooked up by Colonel Kenji Doihara, long recognized as a master of intrigue, a smooth maker of incidents. China forced war upon Japan. Because of the incidents, it was necessary for Japan to... Intervene. That was Doihara's story. At the time, he was Secret Service agent of the Gondung Army, which for years had been garrisoned on the Gondung Peninsula on the mainland. Since the defeat of the Russians in the Russo-Japanese War of 1904 and 1905, the Japanese had had troops in Manchuria. And after the Gondung Army had put down the incident by taking all of Manchuria, Doihara went about establishing a puppet government. He will be served in a moment, Mr. Ying. Thank you. Cigarette? Not just now, please. Mr. Ying, is it possible that you are not satisfied with the present policy of the Chinese national government with respect to Manchuria? There are, of course, shall I say, certain changes which some of us believe would be helpful. I understand. It is such progressive men as you who should have a voice in the destiny of Manchuria. What do you mean, Colonel Doihara? We feel that we can work together for our mutual good. Oh, hmm. A man of your caliber is needed in Tung Chao. In North China, yes. Tung Chao needs an administrator. We would, of course, establish you comfortably. Uh Uh-huh. We feel that a man of your intelligence and background would see the advantages of such an arrangement. Perhaps we shall have an opportunity to... Consider this at another time. Do not hurry away, Mr. Ying. 
sit down. It is now 10.35 o'clock, Mr. Ying. You may have until 11 o'clock to accept. Behind the scenes, using cunning and bribery and threats, Doihara pulled the string so well that he became known as the Prince of Puppetry. He established Henry Pu Yi, last emperor of the Manchu dynasty, as Emperor Kang Te of Manchuria, renamed Manchukuo. And while he was doing this work, other leaders of the Gandong army were busy with other tasks. What we must have now in Manchukuo is a regimentation of economy. Do you want big business to come in and take control? We shed our blood to conquer Manjoko. But if we permit big business to come in, they will run Manjuko for their benefit. We shall not permit them to do that. We of the Kongdong Army must develop Manjoko as a base of operations against China and as a base of operations against Russia. But how can we control big business once we permit it to enter? Before we permit it to enter, we shall determine the basis on which it shall operate. It must operate for the Kongdong Army or it shall not operate at all. These were the conditions. The Gandong army had taken Manchuria and held in its hand the development of the country. Before long, the effects of this control became apparent. Excellent highway you have here. It is our purpose to make Manjoko as modern as your America. Yes. I've seen highways like this all the way from the Laodong Peninsula up to the Russian border. Roads are arteries of commerce. Mm -hmm. Well, there's another company of your troops along the road. There are still many bandits in Manjoko. Enough so that you need that many troops to guard the road? We never know where they will attack. We must keep the roads open at all times. You could move a good deal of uh, equipment over a road like this. Yes, like your American roads. I notice that highways branch off from your railways. The railways, as well as highways, must be protected from sudden attack. Well, who runs this great integrated system? Business interests or... Uh... The military. We have worked out a very happy plan of cooperation between both. I see. Under the control of the Gandong Army, Manchuria became not only a base of future operations against China and Russia, not only an arsenal. It likewise became the training ground for the military firebrands. And here, the blueprints of conquest were worked out. Officers of the Gandong Army bent over maps of East Asia. Oh, we can uh, move from uh, here in Manchukuo down into uh, north of China. We cannot move against China until we know what Russia will do. If you conceive of uh, Russia as a possible ally of uh, China, let us uh, then first determine how far uh, Russia will go. We must know Russia's position. It will be no great task to determine that. We shall simply create an incident on the Soviet border by sending a... Captain Voronian. Yes, Sergeant. Two Japanese gunboats are trespassing in the Soviet channel of the river. Japanese gunboats? Yes, sir. Here, take my field glasses. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, they are Japanese gunboats. And they are trespassing. Go back to your post at once, sir. Fighting has broken out on the Amur River between Japanese and Soviet troops. After Japanese gunboats trespassed in Soviet channels of the river, the Russians landed troops on two small islands in midstream. Japanese forces of the Kongdung Army today attacked the Russians, sank one Russian gunboat, and damaged two others. Down with the Russian pair! Well, it looks like they're beating the war drums for action. Yeah, that's a Japanese method. What do you mean? Sugiyama has reported the affair personally to the emperor. Yes, I know. Both the war minister and the chief of staff have reported to Hirohito. And the cabinet has been in conference all night. Well, they're just going through the motions of preparing for war. Well, you think all of this is just double talk? Well, I've been over here in Japan a long time. I've seen this sort of thing before. And what do you think is the purpose? Well, that's pretty hard to say right now, but chances are we'll know pretty soon. Demands were made of Moscow by Tokyo, and those who understood the situation looked to Moscow for the next break. 
Japan had forced the hand of Russia. Now it was Russia's play. Moscow today took a conciliatory position in the Amur River flare-up when it advised Tokyo that the Japanese demands would be met. In Tokyo, the high command had learned what it wished to know. You see, uh, General Sugiyama, uh, Russia will not take uh, sides with uh, China against uh, Japan. Then we are ready to move. Five days later, through the manipulations of the Gandong army leaders, the Japanese attacked the Chinese at the Marco Polo Bridge outside Beiping and the war against China was started. Meantime, another leader of the Gandong army, the stormy Petro, Kingoro Hashimoto, had been training firebrands in Manchuria, the Gandong laboratory of war. Our sublime mission is to dominate the world. This was Hashimoto, and these were his exact words. You must take it upon yourselves to chop off the head of any individual whether he be a public figure or private citizen who dares to stand in the way of your divine mission. I swear to behead any individual who seeks to thwart our mission. I swear to have no contact whatever with foreigners or their thoughts. I swear to devote my life to the Japanese domination of the world. Under Hashimoto, murder became a method. The young officers he trained suspected not only foreigners and public officials and private citizens, They suspected even their own senior officers. Hashimoto burned his stamp into the souls of the young Japanese under his command. And with ruthless cruelty, he demonstrated his attitude toward foreigners. In December 1937, during the Japanese drive on Nanking, Hashimoto was in command of shore batteries along the Yangtze. Uh, There are still some foreign ships in the river, Colonel Hashimoto. Hashimoto scanned the river with field glasses. Yes. That is the American gunboat Panay down there, Major. Oh, that is the Panay, yes. And another gunboat, the Ladybird, is evacuating foreigners from the city. They are slow in getting out of the way. Oh, the Ladybird has already gone. But the Panay is still down there. And there are American and British cargo ships still on the river. Uh, Colonel Hashimoto, sir. Yes, Colonel. This communique has just been received from headquarters at Shanghai. Yes. This is in order to clear the river of shipping. Oh, does that mean enemy shipping or oil shipping? The order says clear the river of shipping. Take the necessary action, Major. Use both aircraft and shore batteries. On the bridge of the United States gunboat Panay, the Americans were busy with their routine duties. Look out to bridge. Look out to bridge. Yes, look out. The Japanese planes overhead, sir. Looks like they're maneuvering directly over us. Yes, I see them. Looks as though they're diving on us, sir. Perhaps they're not go- Yes, they are. They missed us. Gentle quarters. Battle station. Battle station. Anti-aircraft guns, machine guns, concentrate fire. Look out to bridge. Look out to bridge. Go ahead, look out. Shaw batteries firing on us, sir. Shaw batteries. Heavy guns reply to the shore batteries. Reply to the shore batteries. Abandon ship. Abandon ship. As the Panay, shattered with bombs and shells, settled, and the waters of the Yangtze washed over her decks, those of her crew that could still move fled in their small boats to the shore. They tried to conceal themselves in the marshes. Get down. Stay under the marshes. They're coming back. They're coming back to save us, sir. Colonel Hashimoto had done what many a Japanese army man had wished to do, but had never dared to do. As a final gesture of discipline, he was transferred. But he was to be heard from again. Meanwhile, another young colonel, Colonel Seishiro Itagaki, was rising under the strong man of the Gondung army, General Toshizo Nishio. And he it was who saw the value of the intelligence of Itagaki to the Gondung army. (laughs) 
It is a matter, Colonel Itigaki, of controlling the key positions in the government. Without controlling the key positions, we can never have control of national policy. That is right, Colonel. We must have the same complete control in other departments as we have through the Minister of War. The Minister of War has direct access to the Emperor. The only member of the cabinet with this privilege, with the exception of the Minister of the Navy. That is invaluable. We must have more of these key positions. Yes. We must be in a position to control the cabinet or to force its collapse. This the Kondong army can do. But, General, I am no soldier. You have a command, Colonel. Use it. Because of his brilliance, the Gandung army looked more and more to Itagaki. They saw him as, potentially, one of their most valued leaders. In 1938, he was in command of a fighting unit in China. Colonel Itagaki, sir, we are caught in a trap. A trap? Yes, sir. The enemy is bringing up strong reinforcements. But it was my understanding that we were on the enemy's flank and that he had no reserves in this sector. Our losses are heavy, sir. We are completely trapped. <laughs> Twenty-five thousand Japanese fell in that battle, and Itagaki suffered complete humiliation. He prepared to join his ancestors through Harikari. I... I told you I was no soldier, General Nishio. Oh, you must not think of... No, no, you need not try to convince me. My spirit shall be of greater value to Japan than my body. The Kondung army needs you. Arrive. Uh, Japan needs you. 25,000 Japanese soldiers entrusted to me? Dead. I can never accept a command. Each to... of us serves in his own way, Colonel. We are not thinking of you as a commander of troops. But I have given proof that I am of no value. You are of great value in your field. We have work for you to do. Leave the fighting to us. Now, Nishio went back to Tokyo, and Itagaki succeeded him as chief of staff of the Gandung army. With his staff, Itagaki set up the government of Manchuria, set up its economy. Others carried out his plans, such leaders as Doihara and Tojo. Tojo commanded the Gandung army's military police, including its espionage. Yes, General Itagaki. I have agents in every part of Manjoko. The Pandaba agent? The best. They are stationed everywhere. From the hotel rooms on Bay Run to the Soviet frontiers. And what is the attitude of our officers these days, Colonel Tojo? No discontent has a chance to get started. And the foreigners? Have you found suspects among them? Only one. A Britisher. Take care of him. Good day, Colonel. In Manchuria, Itagaki's work was outstanding. And he also was called back to Tokyo for a promotion to Minister of War for the Gandung leaders were rising to power in the Japanese government. Congratulations, General Itigaki. So spoke the Gandung leaders. But the liberal leaders regarded Itigaki's promotion with misgivings. It is a step backward. General Nishio put him in there. There are many others who should have been considered first. Yes, officers with a seniority of a service and a age. And the officers who do not permit their armies to be trapped and suffer the loss of 25,000 killed. Uh, we can look for increasing pressure from the Kandung army and the government from now on. They were right. Itagaki sent to Manchuria for Tojo, named him vice minister of war, requested him to carry on in Japan the same sort of policing and espionage that he had directed so well in Manchuria. Today, became, Tojo became the watchdog at home, while Itagaki and Nisho proceeded with plans for their holy war on Russia. Our first objective, Nisho must be to end the China incident. Itagaki saw the wisdom of ending the war in China before taking any definite steps toward Russia. Meantime, we must move toward a better understanding with Rome and Berlin. Russia's strength and interest must be divided. Yes. And uh, that will also have the effect of forcing the democracies to stop helping China. Rome and Berlin have signed the anti comintern Pact. This could be the instrument to use against Russia? Yes, it could, Itagaki. Itagaki's statesmanship was beginning to unfold. One day the world learned that Japan had signed the anti-Comintern pact against Russia. This, in effect, made Japan a member of the Rome-Berlin axis. Japan rejoiced.
That is, those who saw eye to eye with the Gondung leaders. Russia was now hemmed in on both east and west. Uh, in effect, Itigaki, uh, we have now cleared the way for a decisive blow against China. Then we shall move against Russia. But other things were in the wind. Hitler was getting ready to attack Poland. He needed to be sure that Russia would not go in on Poland's side. He sent Joachim von Ribbentrop to the Kremlin at Moscow. Hello, hello, give me the desk. Yeah. Hello? Desk. Yeah, uh, hello, this is Manley. Yeah, Manley. Here's a bulletin for you. Pilot to New York right away. Shoot. Russia's just signed a non-aggression pact with Germany. But what? Soviet Russia, Nazi Germany? Yeah. Well, for... Makes Japan look like a sucker. Yeah, especially a guy named Hidegaki. The news fell like a sledgehammer blow on Itagaki. But with him still was Nisho. The fort is not yours, Itagaki. The brain rests on Premier Hiranuma. Hiranuma was to be the scapegoat. He was the premier. Presently, the emperor announced the resignation of Hiranuma. And presently, there was other news. Nobayuki Abe has been appointed the new premier of Japan. Nobayuki Abe? Who's he? He is a figurehead of the Kandung army. Mm-hmm. How do you liberal Japanese feel about that? Oh, well, that is only part of it. The Kandung army has put its men in all key posts. Not only in the government, but also in the responsible positions on the mainland of Asia. Mm-hmm. Well, could I be permitted to assume that the Kandung army plans to control the entire government and its policy? It is nearly an accomplished fact. The control of the army is nearly completely in the hands of one man, Nishio. The Kandung army was moving toward control of the entire Japanese army, control of the navy, control of the government. While Nishio and Itagaki pulled the strings of government and army politics, Tojo kept a weather eye out for intrigue. One day, his dragnet came up with a bigger catch than he'd ever bargained for. They wanted to murder Admiral Yonai. Admiral Yonai? The premier? They were ready to move when we took them. They are now in jail. All of them? All except the leader. Who is he? Hashimoto. Hashimoto? Where did the conspiracy buzz through the inner circles in Tokyo? Yonai, the premier, learned about it. Learned that Hashimoto, whom he knew well, was the arch-conspirator. Yonai rested uneasily for days. Hashimoto walked about scot-free. Nine days later, the resignation of Yonai was announced. Hashimoto's position became stronger, more secure than ever before. Prince Kanoya was named as premier. The world capitals watched closely to see what would be done about Hashimoto. Therefore, by direction... Gengoro Hashimoto is named head of the committee to draft the new political and economic structure of Greater Japan. Gengoro Hashimoto will direct the planning of this committee. And... That was with Prince Kanoya. Hashimoto had shown that it's not always necessary to murder. The fear of murder is sometimes as strong a weapon as assassination itself. Through the structure which Hashimoto and his committee set up, to be known as the Imperial Rule Assistance Association, Japan moved down the road toward totalitarianism. You see, it has replaced all political parties. Well, that's practically what happened in Germany and Italy. Almost the same. Well, then what of representative government? Well, there will be no representative government. The government is in the hands of the militaries, and we liberals must go underground. Nisho and Itagaki worked hand in glove. They controlled the army. They controlled the government. The pace of events was accelerated... And in 1941, Konoya's cabinet fell. We uh, must see that a premier is appointed whom we can trust without the question of doubt. So spoke Nishio. And Itagaki knew whom he meant. It must be a man strong enough to control the cabinet for us. That can only be Tojo. The emperor went through the motions of selecting a premier. All the living former premiers and many of the elder statesmen were called for a conference at the palace. Behind all this was the smooth strategy of Nisho and Itagaki. In less than four hours, newspaper men and observers were summoned for an important announcement. Gentlemen, War Minister Lieutenant General Adeke Tojo has been appointed the new premier of the Imperial Japanese government. Well, congratulations. Uh, congratulations, General Tojo. 
Do you have any statements you'd like to make to the American public? I dislike talking. I will make my policies clear by enforcing them. So Joe crapped the whip over the cabinet for his bosses, Nisho and Itigaki. Behind them was the Gantung Army. The army that had been spawned in Manchuria, that had risen to control the destinies of the nation. Within a matter of months, the names of these men were to be known around the world. For during these fateful months, the events leading to and following Pearl Harbor were being perfected. Tojo and Nisho and Itagaki wrote their names into American history on December 7, 1941. As premier and chief of staff, Tojo directed the policies of aggression of the Gondong army. Like a poisonous fluid, the Japanese aggressors spread out over the map of East Asia and the Pacific. From Wake Island, the Philippines, Hong Kong. Burma, Malaya, Singapore, the Andaman Islands. Sumatra, Java, Borneo, the islands of Micronesia and Melanesia. When the aggression was stopped and the Japanese suffered defeats at Guadalcanal, the Marshals, the Gilberts, the Carolines, the Marianas, the shadow of defeat fell across Tojo. General Tojo has been relieved of his position as chief of staff. The announcement came like a thunderbolt. However, this change will in no way affect General Tojo's post as premier. Being relieved of the responsibility of being chief of staff, General Tojo will have more time to devote to his duties as premier in order to guide Japan to glorious victory. Two days after Tojo was relieved as chief of staff, American listening posts heard a Tokyo radio announcement. General Hideki Tojo has resigned as premier. The emperor has asked General Kuniaki Koiso to form a new cabinet, and General Koiso is now in the process of selecting his ministers. General Koiso is a man of broad experience. The details of Koiso's experience were well known to men familiar with the Japanese scene. Koiso? Yeah, he's been the governor of Korea for some time. Koiso, he's got an academic military background. He was once chief secretary of the Supreme War Council, and he was once vice minister of war. Koiso, I knew him well. He was a member of the staff of the Kondung Army in Manchuria in 1932. Something of what might be expected of Koiso was revealed in his first public statement after becoming premier. Japan will further strengthen her ties with Germany. And Japan will befriend neutral countries in order that they may offer positive cooperation to the Japanese people. Japan offers sincere friendship to Russia. It will be our purpose to... Koiso made a bid for better relations with the countries that would have most to do with the successful prosecution of her war. This was the analysis of Koiso's position. But for those who saw in the removal of Tojo a move toward a more liberal Japanese policy... There was the realistic view of the men still around and back of Koiso. Koiso's cabinet is as much under the control of the Kandung Army clique as Tojo's cabinet. The key positions are still held by Kandung Army men. Three of Tojo's ministers are still in Koiso's cabinet. And in addition, there's the gray fox of the Kandung Army. The militarist who has been identified with every important step in the rise to power of the Kandung Army. General Jen Sujiyama. These are the men who control Japan. have been listening to The Pacific Story, presented by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations as a public service to clarify events in the Pacific and to make understandable the cross-currents of life in the Pacific Basin. For a reprint of this Pacific Story program, send 10 cents in stamps or coin to University of California Press, Berkeley, California. and directed by Arnold Marquis. The original musical score was composed and conducted by Thomas Peluso. Your narrator, Gane Whitman. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.